Hi, everybody. Matt Bernier joined by Mike Beer, taking a look at the Breeders' Cup focus for this week, and we're focused on the Breeders' Cup turf. It's a fascinating division in general. Let's first start off with looking at some of the possible contenders to run in this race, including the morning line odds from DRF's national handicapper, Mike Watchmaker. Mike, you can see that Mike Watchmaker has an able listed at 7-5, to five, and she won the arc just a couple of weeks back. We know what she's capable of. Many of the U.K. bookmakers... They have her listed as, as short as one to two. So seven to five. I respect Mike Watchmaker immensely. There's just a, I have a very hard time believing we may actually get that seven to five. Some of the other names in there include Roaring Lion at odds of five to one, Waldgeist at eight to one, and then some of our domestic hopes, Channel Maker at 12 to one, Robert Bruce at 12 to one, Glorious Empire at 15 to one. Let's kick things off with that video from the arc a couple weeks back, Mike. And overall, what were your thoughts on Enable? This was only her second start of the year, but boy, she looked pretty darn good. Yeah, I think that's the real takeaway, too. I mean, she's obviously a filly who had some setbacks um, earlier this year, so she didn't really get to her, get her campaign started. She's only run twice this year. She's won both of them, including uh, a defense of her, her arc title. Listen, she got a really good trip in this race, uh, but she also ran really well. You can see her open up a clear lead here in the stretch. She just holds on late over a really talented three-year-old filly who was unlucky in this race, but I don't really want to take that much away from Enable, you know, who's had some issues this year to come back and defend her title in the arc and just her second start. I'm going to give her a little bit of credit for that. A few of the also-rans in there that could possibly be running over here in about a week and a half include Cloth of Stars, Waldgeist, and Capri. For what it's worth, Roaring Lion and Capri are supposed to be running on Saturday in the champion stakes at Royal As at Ascot. Excuse me. Overall, your thoughts on – look, this has been something that's been tried numerous times, and it's never worked. The winner of the ARC coming over here in the same year trying to win the Breeders' Cup turf, as good as Enable is, there have been a number of very talented horses to come over here and fail. Why should we expect this is any different? Yeah, it's true. I, you know, I guess the only thing that I would say about that is, you know, as far as Enable goes anyway, at least it's not like she's had one of those strenuous campaigns to get herself to the ARC this year. I mean, she really hasn't done that much racing, so maybe she actually shows up for the Breeders' Cup as a relatively fresh horse, and, and I guess maybe that could make a difference. Um, we'll see what happens. I think you're right, though. She's going to be a very short price um, if she shows up, and we'll see how she does. As far as the others go, you know, I think Capri is a pretty nice horse um, who's gotten into good form. It does look like he's the kind of horse who really likes a little bit of giving the ground. You know, who knows? Maybe he'll get that uh, early November Churchill Downs. You know, there's at least a chance he catches the kind of ground he likes. The also runs in the arc have historically done quite well in the Breeders' Cup turf, so maybe that's an angle to keep an eye on. I also thought Waldgeist, all things considered, I didn't think it was the cleanest trip. Thought he ran well enough in the arc there. Hopefully we'll see him back here in a few weeks. Another horse that's a possible runner in this race, and who knows, even potentially in a race like the Breeders' Cup Classic, could be Roaring Lion, and so much of that is dependent on what happens this upcoming Saturday. We're going to take a look back at the Irish champion stakes from this horse. Now, look, we know he's very talented, but, Mike, if he runs in this spot, I just, I'm just i not totally convinced he's as good as Enable. And if he runs in a race like the Breeders' Cup Classic, he's by Kitten's Joy. I, has there ever been a good dirt horse by Kitten's Joy? Yeah, I never like it when these guys try to go in the Classic with their really good turf horses. Maybe it'll work out for him, but it's just not my thing. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with Ryan Line. He's a four-year-old or a three-year-old um, who just feels like he's getting better from race to race. Um, I love that effort that we just looked, looked at right there. I mean, I love the way that he closed down a really nice horse at the end of that race. That was a mile and a quarter. I think he'll be fine with a mile and a half. He's really improved since they stretched him out in distance. Um, so I'm not, you know, way against him um, as an upset chance against a horse like Enable in the Breeders' Cup. I actually think this horse is pretty good. We normally just sort of throw the blanket statement out there that the Europeans are more talented and better than our American horses. And for the most part, I think that's an accurate statement. Perhaps you've got a couple of really nice inform horses here domestically, most notably Channel Maker. We're going to go back to the Joe Hirsch Turf Championship. And this was a race where it was over a little bit of a bog. But boy, Channel Maker, he slowly but surely put together a very impressive campaign. And I suppose you can make the case that he's coming into the Breeders' Cup about as well as a horse can. Yeah, that's 100% true. He's really improved. I think the big difference for him so far in his last couple of races especially has been they started using his positional speed a little more. He was, you know, more of a one-one closer for the, you know, the bulk of his career. Now they're getting him involved earlier. It's really paying dividends. I think worth pointing out in that race, we just looked there, the Turf Classic. That was the first day at Belmont this uh, fall meet where the rails were down on the turf course, and he was on the freshest part of that course the entire way. I think it did make a difference. I think it worked against Robert Bruce a little bit. But I don't want to take anything away from Channel Maker. He's been really good in his last three races. 
Robert Bruce on the far turn looked like he had a full head of steam and he was going to go right up there and challenge Channel Maker only to, I don't want to say lose his action mid-stretch, but it looked like he just took a bit of an awkward step. Do you think it was a combination of that and the yielding or softer growing, or do you think he has some distance limitations? Yeah, I, I'm sort of conflicted about that, so I think it sort of makes it come down to price on Breeders' Cup Day for me because I do think there's a chance that once he took off the inside there and got over that ground that was a little more chewed up, it worked against him, and I think it might have cost him. But there's a flip side of that argument that just is maybe he doesn't want to go a mile and a half. And I wouldn't argue with anybody who looks at him that way either. We'll see what kind of price he is on Breeders' Cup Day. As far as Channel Maker is concerned, he's in great form. There's no denying that. And he certainly turned a corner. And as you said, it's sort of been accompanied with them using his early speed. Another horse that I think we have to discuss before we button this up is Glorious Empire. Because Glorious Empire is a horse that has really, they tied in one of them. But he got the better of Channel Maker up at Saratoga over the summer. Is it a, a course a situation of horse for course with Glorious Empire where he just loves Saratoga, or is he another one that you need to take seriously considering he's probably going to be cutting out the fractions? It's tempting to think that he really likes Saratoga because that's where his three real big races have come, um, but there's no denying he's in really good form and he's at dangerous speed. He will be loose on the lead in the Breeders' Cup. We'll find out. Let's take a look one more time at the odds from Daily Racing Forms National Handicapper Mike Watchmaker, his morning line for the Breeders' Cup turf. Again, these are possible horses that could be going in this race in about a week and a half's time. You see Enable. She is coming over here. She just won the arc for the second time. Seven to five on Watchmaker's morning line. I have a funny feeling that would be absolute stealing if we could get seven to five on Breeders' Cup Saturday. She might go considerably shorter, but it's worth noting. There's never been an ARC winner to come over here and win the Breeders' Cup Turf in the same year. We'll find out if Enable can buck that trend.